So we start with the migrant crisis along the Poland-Belarus border. It has eased, at least for now. Thousands of migrants have left their encampment. Meanwhile, German Chancellor Angela Merkel is trying to broker a deal with Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko to defuse tensions. Alyosha Milankovic reports from Warsaw. No, tak. Dorota Novok spends hours on the phone every day. She is with the Salvation Foundation, a Polish NGO helping migrants who cross the border from Belarus into Poland. These are some of the people who eluded security forces and made it past the three-kilometer exclusion zone. The Salvation Foundation is helping them get medical treatment and legal assistance so they can stay in the EU. Those who are caught by the authorities are mostly driven back to the border and pushed back to Belarus. People who are in a very bad health condition are usually taken too. And persons in very bad condition end up in the hospital. However, they can be taken out of the hospital and brought back to the border again or pushed back again. It's difficult to verify the claims as journalists are barred from entering the exclusion zone. The Polish state of emergency in that area is set to expire on December 2nd. According to the government, journalists can report from the border after that date. We uh, assume and we think that this crisis will last uh, for a long time. We are prepared for a long uh, distance um, uh, fight to um, uh, protect our border. Polish authorities, together with their EU and NATO allies, are not hesitant to point fingers about who's to blame for the crisis. The whole uh, movement, the whole action taken by um, Belarusians uh, is well prepared, well uh, built, and we are facing a serious uh, crisis in which is a long-term plan. Western leaders blame the migrant crisis on the Belarus government, which encouraged migrants to come to the area from the Middle East as a way to get into the EU. And also in response to Poland's support of protests in Belarus earlier this year. And while both sides trade accusations, Dorota and her colleagues will continue helping those in need. She said her motives are both humanitarian and political, adding a world without borders as her dream. Meanwhile, hundreds of Iraqis have checked in at a Minsk airport to fly back to Iraq. A returnee talked of the efforts she had to make to get to the airport. I talked to the members of the Belarus army, and frankly, I paid them money just to let me go back to Minsk. I didn't tell them that I'm going back to Iraq because I can't say that. I told them all I want is to go to Minsk to get treatment for my daughter. I paid money for that. I paid $700 to one of them who hired a taxi to take me back to Minsk from the border. This is the first repatriation flight since August this year. Of those who flew from Minsk, 390 got off at the Erbil International Airport in Iraq's northern Kurdistan region. A Belarusian government spokesperson said there were about 7,000 migrants in the country and she promised to help at least 5,000 of them return home if they want to. <clears throat> Excuse me.